Hello, hello, my name is Crystal Chibu and you're welcome to The Hope Group where we teach, infuse and experience hope. lose their voice to hurt, to sorrows, to pain, to disability, to the things that they've been through. Not my guest today. He has stood in spite of all that I, he has been through and he has found his voice in, despite his disability. With me today on The Hope Girl is Barista Owen and he's going to be sharing with us how he's found his hope and how he has strived in spite of disability. You're welcome Barista Owen. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for coming on The Girl. It's my pleasure. Yeah, you know, I'm going to grill you a little bit because, I mean, it's interesting to know that, you know, you're a barrister, you, have po you, you, you live with polio, and you're doing so well, and you're one of the people that is working to ensure that the, dis the disability bill um, is actually um, endorsed Amen. and implemented. Awesome. So please tell me, how has it been easy for you to find your voice? In this generation where disability in Africa is not what people want to reckon with? Well, I will actually um, credit it to the grace of God uh, upon my life. I wouldn't want to take the glory for my mm. success. Yeah. Even though I did some things, past want of God's grace, I made up my mind to mm. survive and not to give up even when the environment and circumstances weren't actually favorable. Mm. And God has actually helped me and I'm so surviving. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously you are surviving and you're doing more than survival. You're actually thriving Thank you. in spite of whatever Thank you. you are going through. Thank you. So tell me, how did you make up your mind to be a lawyer? I mean, was he informed by the things that you've been through or you just stumbled on it? Well, it's a long story, okay. but I don't know how far uh, way back I can go to narrate the story. Um, my desire to read law was actually um, directed by somebody. Let me go back a bit to actually make the story mm. uh, clearer. After my primary education, my parents couldn't continue with my secondary education wow. owing to poverty. Yes, because um, by the time I finished my uh, primary education, um, we relocated to the village and the nearest secondary school to our house then was actually very far. So that if I were to go, it would require me either going by special drop or boarding vehicle several before getting to school and the cost of that my parents sincerely could not afford. Yeah. So that was how my schooling came to an end and I just had to resort to other things. I did petty trading, I sold um, medicines, analgesic, I didn't fall into trouble, thank God. I also did some electronic repairing uh, stuff. So you did a lot of I, stuff? I did a lot during that time. And the issue of going to school wasn't was actually in the picture anymore because wow. it seemed impossible. But somewhere along the line, I just got inspired. I think it's the spirit of God. And I just started, I just had an urge to study. There was even nobody to um, refer to then, but there were textbooks left by my elder siblings who went to say who had done with secondary school so those were all I had to fall back on so I just stumbled on them and I started reading blindly wow. without even anybody to direct me and I realized that I was actually comprehending what I was reading but again I had some confusion because I wasn't mm. actually sure yeah whether what I was comprehending was the real thing they were teaching them out there in school. So I was just doing it somehow. So fast so, forward, how did you now I'm get sorry. into this yes. space? Yes. So 
um, eventually, somebody told my dad that there was a vocational rehabilitation center wow. at Emeneden, that at that center, it's a secondary school, that once you go there, it's a secondary school, you can go there and uh, you attend the secondary school right away and or whatnot. So we, I was excited because I actually wanted to go back to school then. But on getting to the rehabilitation center, it wasn't actually a school. It wasn't a, um, a purely academic uh, institution. Okay. What they had there was um, carpentry, shoemaking, mm -hmm. tailoring, and typing. And that was all. And majorly even um, taught by youth coppers. So I actually felt disappointed because I thought I was actually coming to attend mm. the secondary school I had dreamed of. But that environment also afforded me a good opportunity because it was actually serene. So mm. after the day's lesson, okay. yes, my mates then will go out to play and the dormitory will be very quiet. So it afforded me a good opportunity to actually study because of course I came I went there with those books I inherited from my elder Sibling. siblings, yes. So I read there and reading there was actually interesting. And somewhere along the line, towards when I wanted to write my, mm. my GCE, because I registered for GCE, there was a CISA Tech, which was also near to... MNA. M it, it's in MNA, it's near to the Vocational Rehabilitation Center. So I was told that there, for persons with disability, they attend their extra morals. Wow. I was happy, even though it was quite a distance from MNA to the uh, rehabilitation center to Cisatec, but I didn't have a choice. I'll trek it. The days I'll be lucky, I'll get lift. So when I got there, that was like two months to when we'll write our GCE. That was when I actually got a validation of my comprehension that what I was actually reading and understanding was actually in order. Wow. Because I actually found myself answering the questions they were answering and coping. Uh, there. Then, specifically to how I actually decided for law, at that stage, I was just desirous of acquiring education. Mm. I didn't have a choice. So I came in contact with uh, the, uh, 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 the Iyalas. It's uh, a, uh, Mr. Iyala and his children. Yes, he, he was a widower, but he had um, two, three children. So I became a family friend. So one of his elder, eldest daughter, Victor, Gloria, so, Gloria, Victoria, now mm. asked me, so now you are studying, what do you want to, now you are reading, what do you want to study? I told her, anything, I just want education. He said, mm. no, that's not how to do it. You have to decide on which particular field you'll actually uh, go for. It could be law, it could be any other. That was when I actually made up my mind for law. And I started working towards it. I wrote the GCE, then I passed. And then I wrote JAMP. I passed, and that's how I got admitted to University of Uyo, oh. where I had my first degree. And I had my second degree in the University of Lagos. Indeed, God really does direct people's steps yes. and ensure that, you know, the steps of a good man that, are ordered. That's just, that's so now that you have your voice, now that disability is secondary to you for people out there that are trying to find their voice and trying to get their feet in spite of what they are going through what would be the one word that you're going to give to them well the one word i would actually give to them that god in his fairness does not actually put or leave anybody in a disadvantageous position mm. without overcompensating him the other way so it's just for you to look out for where God has actually overcompensated for your seeming disability wow. or disadvantage and latch onto it and you'll be a success. I mean, before we let you go, can you just tell me a little bit about the disability bill and what's happening on the bill and what your take is on the bill? Well, the disability bill presently uh, pending at the National Assembly. Yeah. Yes, I was actually involved in drafting the primary version. Okay. Yes. Um, before we had a larger stakeholders meeting where more inputs were actually made to it. And it was then sent to the sixth Senate at the House of Reps through Abike Dabiri yeah. and the Senate through Bordel Lajimoke. Mm -hmm. Yes, the then House, uh, National Assembly passed it and 
translated it for yeah. presidential assent. But unfortunately, it wasn't assented to by mm. the president. Then after the sixth Senate, the seventh, uh, the uh, sixth National Assembly, the, six, yeah. the seventh assembly started all over, Again. and it was still not assented to the end of the day. So presently, um, the two uh, chambers, that is the Senate and House of Representatives, have actually passed um, various versions. Okay. And they are now in course of harmonizing it into a single yeah. version that will be translated to Mr. President for his assent. Definitely, I believe that we're going to have, you know, a, a way with that. Uh, Remember, yeah. God definitely overcompensates, according to Barry Owen, for whatever seems like a disability that you might be having. Thank you so much for coming on it's the Hope Grill pleasure. today. We have definitely had a good time, and I hope that you also had a good time. Um, we have a little token for you, oh, really? and um, yes, we do. And I hope that uh, you eat cakes. And thank you so much for coming on Hope Grill. God bless you. I appreciate this. So then go endless. Stay tuned. This is Hope Girl. Our question and ask the whole girl today is my fiance recently suffered a massive stroke he's recovering now i've been by his side day and night but i'm not sure if i can go through with the wedding am i a bad person to think this way how do i deal with this well i'm sorry to hear this but you know what you're not a bad person you're not a bad person for thinking that way because also you need to heal you need to go through your process you need to be sure this is something you want to do and you know if you can go through with it so please take our time to really think through if you want to still go ahead with this because um like you said he's recovering he's going to recover i can only encourage you that he's going to get better but please take time to also go through your process because you need to be healed first also because um hurting people hurt so if you are hurting you will not be able to help him recover as much as he should recover and i hope this helps you if you have more questions please send your questions to ask at the hopegirl.com and we'll have answers for you thank you and so on the grill today our quote is hope is sweet hope is illuminating hope is fulfilling hope is everlasting therefore do not give up hope even in the sunset of your life i hope you have been inspired i do hope you find your voice life definitely will throw a whole lot at you but guess what it's going to be okay and it's going to be fine stay strong stay inspired and have a hope-filled week bye